that of course is not true. Conveniently, a point I didn't make, for six of the eight geometries, any, manu any closed manifold model is going to be a Zeiffer fiber space. There's also a congruence. Every Zeiffer fiber space does have a geometric structure, one of the eight types, one of those six types. And Thurston says that these are hyperbolic. We know these are geometric, so this decomposition actually gives you a decomposition of your manifold into pieces which admit geometric structures. So first, the geometrization conjecture was that that was always true. Notice that there are adjectives, that's the key one. And his conjecture was that it's true anyway. Oh, I'll stop in one minute. So any... into geometric pieces. Now, the, de the canonical decomposition of Torah may be empty, may be no Torah. Then it's got a single piece, and you have to prove the actual manifold you're looking at itself has a geometric structure. That turned out to be very, the hardest bit of the core of the geometrization conjecture, and that was the bit that wasn't known until Perelman came along, so proved by Perelman. I suppose 2003 was when the preprints came out. People have thought about them for many years since. It's correct. So this is the sort of the end result. But the situation is somewhat like that for surfaces, but it's certainly not true that every three manifolds of geometric structure you have to cut it up. But there's a fairly canonical way of doing it. First of all, you have to write it as a connecting sum of primes, then you've got the prime pieces, and then you get this canonical decomposition cutting along the Torah. The only reason I said oriental is just making it slightly simpler to talk about Torah, not allowed to find the false either, but it's just in true. You state it correctly in the non oriental case. Okay, I've run over time. Stop. Questions for our speaker? Yeah. So I actually have a simple question. So, so usually, if a man, three manifolds with boundary uh, has hyperbolic structure, then then we can understand as a type of H three body out by a climbing group, right? But yeah. usually, the differential manifolds are without boundary. So how, how can I understand the boundary of this hyperbolic? Right. Manifold? When you say a compact manifold boundary is a hyperbolic structure, you actually mean the interior has a hyperbolic structure. Interior. Right? And it has a complete hyperbolic structure. So actually, as you go to the of boundary in the compact manifold, in terms of the metric, you'll be going to infinity. So all of the boundary are from the ideal sphere of the hyperbolic space. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Any other questions? Okay, well, so you said, I'm a little bit confused because you said there are only eight relevant geometric structures, but then some manifolds that don't have any of these geometric structures. Right. Now, I know you can define a metric on any manifold by embedding it in Rn, so. Right. Well, the point is the geometric structures the manifolds are very special metrics. The S3, E3, and A3 are this constant curvature metrics. That's very, very special. But the other seven, sorry, the other five geometry, they still have pretty special metrics. For example, as I think I said, they're homogeneous, certainly. The metrics are the same in every point. And there's actually, uh, some of them, there's the manifold has a special direction, but otherwise you get a group of rotations at the point as well. Okay. So there's a lot of special things about these metrics. 
It's true you can put a metric on any romantic, any manifold you make it, but it's not going to be the nice properties that these geometric metrics have. Okay. Okay. So you've got a geometric metric, then you have to cut the manifold up into pieces. Alright. Any other questions? Alright, thank you, speaker.